Welcome back to Face to Face. I'm John Ralston. We're talking about Nevada's safe haven law. And joining me now, attorney Christina Wildeveld. She says parents often have no option but to abandon their children in order to get them the services they need. But that opens them up to criminal prosecution. And Kathleen Bhutan from the Nevada Par Partnership for Homeless Youth is sticking around. Welcome back to the program. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, John. You know, this is, we've talked about these, these, these laws, these stories before. T talk about Nevada and, and what exists here and how we compare to Nebraska, because that's what the reference point people have for this program now. Well, in the state of Nevada, if you have a troubled youth or someone, let's, let's say a, a single parent who has children who or even a married family who has children that they can't control, they can't get services for, they have it, the child hasn't committed a de delinquent act, um, or has committed a delinquent act but their time in custody is up, and the parents just say, I simply cannot take care of my child anymore, they're too much to handle. Those parents are charged um, with child abuse and neglect and are brought up on charges and have criminal charges pending because of it. Um, where oftentimes the only way to get help is to abandon your child in the state of Nevada your adult, your juvenile ch children. We're not talking about infants. We're talking about juveniles. Well, let me just read. Uh, and you said some of it here. Uh, the par when a parent can legally abandon a, a baby with no criminal consequences. Here's the situation: given an emergency service provider uh, within 30 days of the baby's birth, voluntarily delivered to an emergency service provider with no expressed intention of returning for the child. The infant is physically handed to someone thought to be an employee of the emergency service provider. Parent has reasonable cause to believe the baby's health or safety won't be threatened at the location of the emergency service provider. The parent calls 911. An emergency service provider will be dispatched without lights and sirens to take the baby. Here's, here's, here's what's really uh, astounding to me about this whole discussion. I want you to comment on this too, but first let me ask you, the use of the word abandoned. I mean, uh, all three of us are parents. Not, not, it's inconceivable to any of us that we would ever abandon our child. How, how, I mean, it's, how big a problem is this? It's a problem, but I have I have personally counseled a woman who had a child who was worried with her other children in the house, the other children's safety, because this child was so out of control. He needed services, he hadn't committed any delinquent acts, and even when he had committed a delinquent act, when he was released from custody, he had to go back to his parents. The mother simply said, I can't take him anymore, I can't do anything. And the state said, if you leave him, you're abandoning him and you'll be brought up on criminal charges. Unfortunately, I had to counsel her as to what that meant, and then she had to make the, op the choice whether or not to be brought up on those criminal charges. And unfortunately, in her situation, it was so bad that being brought up on criminal charges was easier for her than taking her child back home with her, a child that she loved but she couldn't provide for because he needed services and the state wasn't giving him services. You're looking uh, knowingly here as if this doesn't surprise you that much. The, the kids that you deal with, uh, and if you don't know the exact percentages, give me ballpark, are they kids that have run away to come to you? Are they kids that have been abandoned, to use the term? Should, w w what are the percentages there? Uh, well, first let me go back and talk about Nevada is also the only state in the country that has what's called a right to shelter law that says uh, if you're 12 years of age or older and you're an unaccompanied minor and the service provider deems that you're neglected, they can provide the same exact services to you as if you were an adult, uh, which makes it very friendly for us to be able to work with unaccompanied minors. Maybe still not so friendly for the parents, right? Well, it depends, and, and I, I have to uh, jump in here as a child advocate. I mean, the, the easy thing to do, and you know this, John, you have a teenage daughter, is to throw in the towel and say, I can't deal with this youth any longer. Um, sending those kids through our bureaucratic system is not really the the most cost-effective thing for the taxpayers, and it's definitely not best for the youth. Uh, I don't think when our founding fathers uh, developed our Constitution, they ever had in mind that we would have to, a government infrastructure uh, that where you wouldn't want to take care of your kid, and our government would have to do that. And so as a result, we have a, a a terrible mess, not just in Las Vegas, but nationally, um, with unaccompanied minors, whether they're homeless youth or throwaway youth or runaway youth, uh, where they're not in the presence of their primary guardian. The problem seems to me, I know you want to jump in, but the, the problem seems to me with laws in this area is that they're so cookie cutter and they, they, don't, they don't give into the nuances of a lot of these different kinds of situations. Right, and that's what I wanted to say. There are different situations, the abandoned kids, throwaway kids. No child is a throwaway kid. And if a parent doesn't have the ability to care for their kids, there are plenty of wonderful people out there that want to care for a child. Um, unfortunately, most of them you have to go through the red tape in order to be able to care for them, which makes it unattainable for a lot of people. But is it better to have a law like Nebraska? 
I think so. I think it is better to have a law like Nebraska because then we don't have runaway kids. No, we don't I, have. I, I have to vehemently disagree. I, I, don't, I think it's too easy for us as a society to say, this, I'm going to label Johnny bad, and Johnny's difficult, and I'm going to push him on the government to take care of him until he turns 18 years of age. That is not excusable. Right. I don't think it's excusable, and I agree, I agree with what you're saying, but look at Aaron. He, he's a wonderful kid, well, but and he's actually thriving without his, his he parent. Is. And he's better off without him. He is doing better in, in our nonprofit organization. He never made his way into the child welfare system, which is a double-edged sword in itself. I mean, Aaron is 16 years old, and he shouldn't be treated any differently than a six-year-old who had been neglected. But the government <coughs> isn't even doing a good job taking care of them. Oh, I think he's better off in your hands so, than he is I, in the I, government. I, I know the audience has forgotten about me, but I'm still here. <laughs> and when we do need to take a break, we're going to continue this discussion. I promise to stay out of the way again. Back in a moment. You're watching Face to Face with John Ralston, a program presented in partnership with the Las Vegas Sun, Cox Communications, and KLAS-TV.